And I, oh, because they had gotten applause without me. Uh-huh, so, uh-huh. You know, there's a lot of joking around, but I was naive, and they beat us out of some money. And but if you say that people remember it, doesn't that that makes me feel good? Sure. What about um? If you don't mind me asking, what, what about you? There's a, a a film that I don't think a lot of people have seen, which is got this monster cast, right? Lee Marvin, Bronson, Ed Lauder, oh, oh. Andrew Stevens, Carl Weathers, uh, you know, yeah. you, Death Hunt. Like, what? Could you tell me about how that came about? I love the scene, you know, in the mountains where your character oh, gets his arm stuck in that trap. Thank you. They, the director, Peter Hunt, liked me. They were going to cut my arm off on the screen, and he had done that in another film so mm-hmm. I was disappointed but I'm disappointed in most of them but it's a chance to work with two of my heroes those mm-hmm. are icons Lee Marvin sure. and Charles Bronson absolutely I, did, I didn't have a car and I believe my son's mother was pregnant but I didn't have a car I auditioned and mm-hmm. went in and I don't know it was simple it was nice whatever but it was a six-week vacation and in one of the most beautiful resort areas in the world, uh, uh, Banff, Canada. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lee brought me back into his room. and It was pretty nice, but he drank so much, depending on whether he's sober or drunk. And, sure, sure, yeah. Uh, but Charlie Bronson is a part of it. I wanted uh, to play roles like they did when I was mm-hmm. in law school. Sure. But uh, they're both veterans, and they, uh, I don't know, it was just, uh, I didn't do much, but I was there, and I hadn't ridden horses much at the time, and I had mm-hmm. to get up on one for eight hours one day. <laughs> I've since learned a little more. Sure, sure. Poor Ed Lauder gets stuck with the name Hazel, right? Oh, Ed, yeah, Ed became real good friends with Lee, but Lee, unfortunately, became so sick he couldn't work anymore. Sure, uh, sure. I like Ed, though. Yeah. What about uh, what about Raggedy Man? That was uh, I that came about because Sissy won the Academy Award, and they mm-hmm. gave her kind of a pick of a Texas writer wrote a book called Raggedy Man, and he later wrote his script for Lone Wolf. I mean, for Lonesome Dove. Sure, sure. But um, I think my agent wanted me to play Sam Shepard's part. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was happy to get the job. And Eric Roberts was about 21 years old. Mm-hmm. That fight so, scene is incredible, too. Oh, and uh, the director did. Uh, the director was Sissy's. Yeah, J- Jack Fisk, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. a nice man. Mm-hmm. But he would tell Eric Sanderson those martial arts and this and that. And. Um, so when we started, Eric's talking to me. He said, "Don't hurt me." <laughs> <laughs> but they had uh, Steve McQueen's double, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lauren. So he, I did a little. He did most. He did some. And uh, back then, I thought I could fly, man. I thought, <laughs> I, and I didn't know near as much as I thought I did. Where did Hopefully, that? I've uh-huh. gotten better about that. Where did that interest in martial arts come from? Well. I uh, was at SMU in Dallas and saw a karate tournament. I, I wouldn't write too much about it, if you don't mind. That I, You could say I loved it, but I okay. was obsessed with it a couple of years. But the, it was different contact, and mm-hmm. if you stay in your weight class is one thing. But sure. Like I did several jobs with Chuck Norris, but I never told him. I flew to California and entered a tournament that he won. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I lost I usually lost, but I, I loved the mental discipline, and my teacher, who later taught Elvis, said, mm-hmm. uh, ego kill you, and I thought it was some of the best advice I ever got. So your teacher was Mike Stone? No, oh. Kong Ree. Okay. Maybe Mike Stone may have taught Elvis early, but he certainly probably had a dalliance with Priscilla, but yeah, yeah, Elvis yeah. in Memphis, <laughs> Elvis uh-huh. Kong Ree, the Korean gentleman, was... Uh, had a studio, so mm-hmm. in fact, I flew Mr. Reed to New York, and he got to referee at the felt mm-hmm. forum, and he told me, uh, a lot of people want me to come to the tournament, but only you and Elvis had flown me. <laughs> Elvis <laughs> put him in a suite, uh-huh. offered to send him women, which he didn't want, but and I took my bartending money mm-hmm. and flew him to New York, and he was a good teacher. Again, in martial arts, I thought I was better than I was. 
<laughs> what about that character in Raggedy Man, though? Because it's such a sleazy character. You know, I, I get my skin sort of my skin uh, my skin sort of crawls when I see, in particular, that scene with you and Tracy Walter where you accost oh, Tracy. Is great. Uh, yeah, Tracy's a genius, right? He's so good. He, he, he's wonderful, and uh, I speak to him from time to time. And I've known him since the seventies in New York. Uh, I just like that they had been in Huntsville prison. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't in the book I read it as fast and a very wise person said didn't work. Didn't work as a thriller, it didn't work as a love story. Now sure. I didn't say that. I didn't mm-hmm. say that. I was just happy to get the part. Mm-hmm. She's a great lady. But in the book he said you want your jaw broke to somebody and <laughs> I I'm still fascinated by outcasts and dumb people and uh, that's probably why I didn't play more ennobling characters. And I'm not that bright either, so it's not hard to play dumb <laughs> characters. It's harder to play smart characters. <laughs> well, y- you mentioned Chuck Norris a minute ago, and I would be totally remiss if I didn't ask you about Lone Wolf McQuaid because it's one of my favorite Norris films, and I am sort of in love with your performance in that because of it's such great intensity there. I wanted to see how that how that character came to you well they dressed him so there's the costume did a lot mm-hmm. yeah yeah the glasses made. right but chuck norris later put me in a number of projects and one i couldn't do it broke my heart man and but chuck is uh one of the few that says i'm gonna write something for you and i went to the caribbean where he was shooting missing in action and he didn't uh-huh. like the director sure so that he had lined up, and so he said, we'll go back to the state. I met the writer there. He, he said, I'm going to write this part, and Chuck lost a brother in Vietnam. So we come back to L.A., and I was offered a movie with Bent, uh, with Burt Reynolds and Clint Eastwood, uh-huh. and I just was sort of part of the woodwork, but the agent said, you got to take that, and Chuck had already given us a little holding money, so when it geared back up, they went to the uh, Philippines, I think, and shot the missing in action that was really good. Mm-hmm. Gave it to Emmett Walsh. It became the biggest uh, grossing independent film of the year. Sure, I sure. had let Chuck down, and I just hated it because it was based on his brother. Sure, sure, um, yeah. But forgive me, I'm so long-winded, but I get, feel incredible regret that even though I worked for him, he put me in a two or three episodes and another thing mm-hmm. up in Oregon. I didn't get to pay him back. Yeah, that would have been... Listen inc- to the agents, you know. That would have been incredible to see you in Missing in Action. Uh, the, one that, the one that Emmett was in, uh, I, I regret that I didn't get to do it. Oh, yeah. But there's, there's a few... Uh, I've been reading about these French writers. Mortifications. <laughs> Well, there's that there's that scene in 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 Lone Wolf McQuaid, which I think is really interesting, which is that where that that scene where you're tied up on the wagon wheel, yeah, yeah. and you and L. Q. Jones and Chuck, and and yeah. you you've got that line that you scream that line. It's like they're gonna kill my son, goddammit, which is really interesting because there's no sort of back history there. So I mean, was that something that was yeah, in the didn't, script? Did, didn't fit, did it? I just well, did it. My dad lived it because he wanted emotion, wow. and I didn't cool. know he'd keep it in there. If they keep the camera running, you know, you have to build it up. Mm-hmm. Some uh, tough black actor, Fred Williamson, ex-football player, might say I was a squealer. But, it, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know. I just act instinctively, and Chuck, they left it in there, and... Uh, He's a drug dealer, you know. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. Well, his name's uh, Snow, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bit of wonderful irony there. Um, there's Was there a sense of – because when I watched Lone Wolf McQuaid, now I see that there's this sense of Sergio Leoneism to it. You know, oh, like, yeah, he stole that music and everything. Yeah, yeah, the music. And then also if you look, there's that scene with Chuck and his act, the actress that's playing his daughter. They walk out of the hospital. It's called the yeah. Eastwood Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's where he got the idea for the television series too. That sure. For, for his, but I remember they hire directors, uh, even experienced ones. But they hired a local tough guy, mm-hmm. and to be in this scene, and I'm um, 
sniffing snow, uh, whatever it was, baking soda or something. But when the gun went off or they say action, they kind of lose their cool and mm-hmm. nick my nose, the knife. So it's kind of, you kind of really appreciate when you get to work with experienced actors, even if it's one scene. I've seen sure. it happen in New York years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, it happened in Texas on Raggedy Man, the guy's a tough local bar owner. But when the camera rolls, they, they get nervous. <laughs> I do too, but I know it. Sure, sure. Well, I thought it was funny that if you, there's that, that part of the scene where um, – Snow gets in the truck and drives and hits that gas tanker. Oh. If you watch that scene, you can see it, the jump cut, right? So it must have been a stuntman, and then they cut and put you in and pulled you out, right, for that scene? Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. that uh, the I recall riding and in a truck driving, and I'm, I have to go limp. And I thought the fire came so – heat came up through the floorboard so much, I thought, oh, God, they made a mistake. <clears throat> And I went with it, and I really believe it's why Chuck wrote me in the next. I know that we were in the truck, and we have the guy, stuntman, hanging on the. We, uh, I just remember driving in in that truck, and uh, and I don't, we weren't placed there mm-hmm. because, and it just scared me to death. Later, I was too dumb to know the guy that blew up the thing had done it a number of times. Wow. So. Uh, it it scared me, but I was on my eyes closed, and he carries me out. But one thing, Chuck, if I can bore you just a little more, absolutely, I jumped out of this second story. I've always felt it was third story onto a truck, mm-hmm. and I had a, apparently a prop in each hand. I'm not sure. At any rate, they were making me feel good, and they said that's pretty good, man. It's hard to keep your balance when you have two props, mm-hmm. and I didn't. You just want to please them, man. And uh, you're lucky, you know, you're lucky sometimes to get through it. Now I love for them to double me. <clears throat> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but that's not, this This director mm-hmm. likes to see the actors do his own stunts. And he's had some accidents, Steve Carver. Sure, sure, yeah. Absolutely. And then what about, um? I mean, I don't want to spend too much time on it because I feel like you've been asked – so much about it, and uh, well, I feel like I'm liking the sound of my voice. <laughs> How can I offset it? I just I've had a rash of uh, Blade Runner conversations lately. I've talked to I've, I remember Ivor Powell, and oh. um, I talked to Joe Turkel recently too for something else. And so I would I kind of wanted to ask you about Blade Runner if that'd be all right. Well, it was uh, up until then I didn't get to play many sympathetic parts so since then i did get to play as as a result i got to play some they may be all strange but uh i uh, i don't know if i'm answering anything oh no 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 that's good yeah i just he gave me a piece of direction that i loved Mm -hmm. because rutger is very bright and he wants to tweak the script sometime and i might say well i like it the way it is and Mm -hmm. but ridley loved uh um Rutger, as I did, but one time Rid, we're doing a scene and Ridley just whispered in my ear, he's a totally innocent man, my character. Mm-hmm. And I'm naive enough, and I think, well, quit worrying about everything. Quit worrying about this and that actor and just try to play it, like he said, innocent. Who's who's totally innocent? And I, <laughs> Alan Ledd Jr. laughed mm-hmm. when I told him that. It, wow. He's a genetic engineer. I didn't – but – it's a good direction. Sure. So what did you think of those sets when you walked on them for the first time? You guys shot that in L.A., right? So. Yeah, it was a very – a lot of stuff didn't get in there. It was a whole uh, a whole sound stage and quite a thrill. You know, you go back 30 years later nearly and you shoot two or three scenes as a guest star. But, you know, a lot of people asked me if they could visit, so I knew it was – Something interesting. Something special. Had you read the the Dick novel or no? No, my ex-wife did, mm-hmm. uh, and Ridley and I talked about it. I, he said, "You read it?" I said, "No, scared to death." And he said, "Neither did I. I couldn't get through it." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you've been asked this. Uh, what do you, What do you think about the theories that uh, all these years later that Decker is in fact a replicant as well? Gosh, I I didn't know that, but. Seemed like Ridley said he was. 
Ah.